Greetings, my friend. How are you doing this week? Thank you very much for stopping by for this thank you yoga break. I have a special episode today as I'm bringing you one of the more challenging poses, maybe the most challenging pose, vinyasa or combination of poses that I do in my practice, my personal practice. So a little bit about me, in case you don't know, my name is Aaron Suzurik. Among other things, I am a 200-hour yoga teacher. And this episode of Thank You Yoga is about the vinyasa, or the combination of poses from Sursasana 2, so that is headstand with the arms kind of like um, as props in the front to bakasana and parsva bakasana or crow pose and side crow pose, which utilize the props of the arms as a as a stabilizer to set the legs upon. So they're um, a quite um, convenient solution to how would I move from headstand to an arm balance. And I always enjoy this pose because it really helps um, wake me up for the day, invigorate me, inspire me, and it helps me be more suited to be more humble um, for life experiences in general because I know what it is to exert a great amount of energy and to be in need of resting, to be in need of space and time to recover, which I find helps me be more open and receptive to the more humbling, peaceful experiences of life. So I'm very grateful for that. And I wish to give you some of my other uh, grateful points for this combination from Sursasana 2 to Bakasana, Parsva Bakasana. So it helps me to feel a great sense of accomplishment. It does feel like sometimes in life it can be rather difficult for me to feel accomplished and satisfied from different uh, experiences I might have. I might feel that I haven't really, really done my part and really achieved the goal in many situations that I have experienced in life. This is a personal viewpoint. Not everybody does view life this way, but I've noticed this is one of the ways that I tend to view life. So by doing this pose and by completing it, or even at least doing my best, I've found that it gives me an opportunity to feel that accomplishment and also to allow myself a chance to sometimes not complete it and feel all right with that as well. So it really does help me work on a lot of different uh, feelings in my life. So also, it greatly works out my arms as it is an arm balance. It helps work out my core abdominal area and it helps me focus on the goal, on what I am doing currently. So, something else is that rest that I mentioned as such a great reward, such a precious thing to, to be able to just rest and to be present in the rest, to not think about having to do something else, moving on to something, just enjoying that rest. And a lot of times when you exert all your physical energy or your mental energy, you're allowed a chance to do that. And in this case, that certainly does happen. Okay? 
there is a balance and a harmony in my body and in my mind that is really tested, that helps me heighten my sense of awareness, um, not only in the still balance, but in the movement and transition, shifting my weight from one point to another, trying to see if that it is working properly together to really achieve that balance and that harmony, that peace of flow of movement. So this is a wonderful exercise for doing so. And in life in general, normally we're moving in and out of different positions, different movements. So it's very useful. I do apologize for noise that is about to occur. This is probably unavoidable since I have my mom has many dogs here and they get very excited when anybody comes in and comes out of the premises so i will try my best to keep my voice up so that you can hear me clearly as the chaos of the barking ensues but let's go ahead and refocus once again bringing it back to this yoga posture that we're about to move into okay so some cautions and contradictions safety is always very important when moving into yoga postures because if performed in a, a foolish a short-sighted way they can harm the body harm your mind maybe create some trauma so Always do your best to perform these postures safe, safely, to take the time to be thoughtful enough to do so. Okay, so as this is a combination of two postures, I will go ahead and give the cautions and contraindications for both of the postures. Okay, so firstly, recalling the cautions and contradictions for crow and side crow pose. According to Yoga Journal, if you have carpal tunnel syndrome or if you are pregnant, you should avoid practicing the crow pose. And for the side crow pose, according to Yoga Journal, you should avoid it if you have wrist or lower back injury, wrist or lower back injury. And for sursasana, according to the yoga journal, if you are suffering from back injury, headache, heart condition, high blood pressure, menstruation, neck injury, low blood pressure, you shouldn't start with the pose. Pregnancy, you might practice sursasana if you are experienced and you can practice sursasana until late in the pregnancy. But if you are just learning sursasana, you should avoid practicing at any time during pregnancy. And sursasana is a intermediate to advanced pose, so always respect that. And if you are learning, take time to try to step up to the pose rather than expecting yourself to understand it all at once. That could avoid a lot of injury, a lot of trauma. Okay. And so with that, I wish to relay some of the positive effects of both the bhakasanas and Sursasana, according to BKS Iyengar, who is a world-renowned yoga teacher. He has since transitioned, but his teachings are very much alive and present today in many books and yoga studios, ashrams, and one of the books is um, Light on Yoga, and this is where I gather my information for these positive effects. So the bakasana can strengthen the arms and the abdominal organs since the abdominal section is contracted. And for parsva bakasana, 
This pose strengthens the arms by continued practice of the lateral muscles of the abdomen will develop the intestines to grow stronger, which is important, of course, when digesting food, when enduring some of the things that we try to consume which might not agree with us. This will help us be a little bit more hardy in these cases. So for the positive effects of Sursasana that are on page 190, I might add that the effects for Bakasana is 317, for Parsva Bakasana on 320, and for page 190, positive effects of Sursasana. Regular practice of sursasana makes healthy blood flow throughout the brain cells. This rejuvenates them so that thinking power increases and thoughts become clear. This asana is a tonic for people whose brains tire quickly. It ensures a proper blood supply to the pituitary and penal glands in the brain. Our growth, health, and vitality depend on the proper functioning of these two glands. People suffering from loss of sleep, memory, and vitality have recovered by the regular and correct practice of this asana and have become fountains of energy. I always like that metaphor, being compared to a fountain of energy. That would be really wonderful. I myself suffer from a lack of energy in many of my daily activities. So keeping Sursasana in the practice is something I try my best to do. And normally every day, except for a few days during the week, I am able to do so. Okay. So the lungs will also gain the power to resist any climate and stand up to any work, which relieves one from colds, coughs, tonsillitis, halitosis, or foul breath, and palpitations. It also keeps the body warm, and I might add that bakasana, I find, helps do the same thing. So two very Nice warming poses that are very advantageous to people in cold climates um, or cold climates during certain parts of the year. So coupled with sarvangasana or shoulder stand movements, it is a boon to people suffering from constipation. So all those twists and turns and the, and the um, upside downness really does help things move and flow a lot better. I can tell you from personal experience. So regular practice of sursasana will show a marked improvement in hemoglobin, red blood cells that bring oxygen to the vertebrates. Regular and precise practice of sursasana develops the body, disciplines the mind, and widens the horizons of the spirit. One becomes balanced and self-reliant in pain, pleasure, loss and gain, shame and blame, and defeat and victory. And I myself think this is due to the, the harmony and balance that must be focused on and allowed into one's consciousness as one moves in and out of this pose. And this is even more increased when we add the combination of using Parsva Bakasana and Bars Bakasana. Okay. So with that, I would like to move into the pose. But before I do that, and maybe I should do this more often, I would like to thank my dear mother because she is so very, so very willing to help me and whatever I might 
even things that I don't ask her to, that she thinks that I would like um, to be to be in place, much like the dogs not barking as much as they would be if she wouldn't take efforts to calm them down. And she's always tries to be quiet during her activities when I might have an activity that needs quiet for some reason or another. So thank you. Thank you so much, my mother, my mother here right now in this lifetime. Thank you so much for all mothers and all that you do for your children. Um, it has been such a great boon in my life and for civilization, society in general. So thank you very much, mothers, before I move into this practice. Okay, and then now let's go ahead and do so. So firstly, we'll come to the map. Okay, once on the map, we'll go ahead and come on to all fours. Once on all fours, we'll lower the head down, place it on a level, a level position as much as possible, trying to feel the balance even here at a great degree. And then we'll place the palms about a upper arm's distance away from the head, moving away from the face, fingers pointing to the face, okay? And then we'll come up, straightening the legs, all right? And then once we do this, we'll go ahead and take an inhale. And as we exhale, we'll move the legs up straight, the body up straight. And feel the balance here for a time. When you are secure in that feeling, go ahead and fold the legs, bend the legs down, and then take an inhale. And as you exhale, twist to the left. And move into that side crow pose, allowing the legs to be supported by the left arm, and stay here for a while, okay? I usually stay here for the count of maybe 25 in a nice relaxed pace, and then when you're ready, we will move the balance once again onto the head. Okay, very important to do so. All right, and once you are secure there, go ahead, take an inhale. And then as you exhale, push the body up straight once again. Okay, once you are secure in this balance, go ahead and allow the legs to fold once again. Okay, take an inhale and exhale. Twist the legs to the right and move into that Parsva Bakasana on the right side. Breathing here as gently as you are able to. And when ready to do so, bring the balance back onto the head. Okay. 
And once you are here, if you're particularly tired, you can just move into normal bakasana. If you would like a core workout, a little bit more than we already have, you can push the body back up straight. Okay. And when ready, lowering the legs. And shifting the balance back ever so slightly over the arms. And taking some nice and gentle breaths in and out here. And when ready, lowering head back down. Pushing body back up. Finding the balance and lowering legs down straight. Uh, arms feel like putty as they always do. <sighs> and here we might do some maintenance to help relax different parts of our body that had stress on them. So I like to release the wrists by pressing the hands down with the upper body weight, palms up like so, trying to calm the breath. Nice, easy flow in, nice, easy flow out. And when that feels good, we can go ahead and move the hands back forward, palms down. And maybe release the neck a little bit, rotating this way, rotating that way. Okay, swinging back and forth maybe. And then when ready to do so, I invite you to take a resting pose for a while. Give your body and mind and possibly spirit <laughs> a chance to rest after all of that exertion. Easy breath in, easy breath out. I invite you to bring gratefulness to your consciousness, focusing on being grateful for the body, its effort to carry you through the practice, the ground for supporting us through this practice the mind for allowing us to focus, to calm, to balance, to be clear, to have that intention directed on the path of focus, on the path of practice, and to be very grateful for the vital breath which connects all living beings, which connects us to all experiences, which provides us with the nourishment we need moment to moment to keep practicing, to keep living. This 
keep coming back and back once again to centered balance and peace. Thank you, thank you, my friend, for being here for this. Thank you, yoga break. It is a great blessing for me to be able to find enough focus and clarity, enough opportunity to do these videos, to write the articles, it's really a great boon to my practice, helps me deepen my experiences, and it helps me learn to work with others and to hopefully bring to others something beneficial, beneficial, maybe curious, and maybe interesting. Um, it's always an adventure, an exploration, a journey. We are all on it together, and I wish to thank you so much for being here with me now, for being present in the world, alive in the world, for doing your best day to day, for being wonderful you. I also want to give particular thanks to my friend Anna, who sent me this shirt from overseas where she lives in Poland. Thank you so much, Anna. And thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Mom, for <laughs> providing me with a nice, quiet, and open space where I can practice today. Thank you, Light. Thank you, God. Thank you. God bless you. Namaste. Have a wonderful day.